Hi everyone, my name is Matthias and I'm glad you're still following my videos. As promised before in this video, I'm gonna deep dive into the features of the spatial engine of SAP HANA and SAP HANA Cloud. I've told you before that spatial data is part of SAP HANA's multi-model concept and I told you my analogy uh, with food, where you have to process ingredients differently to get your delicious meal at the end of the day. Now I'm gonna deep dive what that means on a technical level. On a technical level, we got on SAP HANA the relational store, of course, which is probably 90% or more than 90% of the data you're dealing with. Besides that, we also have support for spatial data, for graph data, as well as for semi-structured JSON documents, which are all nice and transparently getting together on the SQL script layer, which gets me back to the analogy with the food. This is where you consume your delicious meal. And this is what this session will be about from a spatial perspective. I've told you before that the spatial engine of HANA supports vector data types, 2D, 3D, and 4D vector data, that we're OGC compliant, and that SAP HANA as such is an ESRI certified geodatabase. I now will deep dive a bit, of the, deep dive a bit into the 100 native SQL-based geospatial functions that we are offering. Before we come to that, let me briefly elaborate on the different geometry types that we're supporting. Essentially, on HANA you can store points, line strings and polygons, as well as the pendants to multipoint, multi-line string and multi-polygon. On top of that, we have support for circular strings and geometry collections. That means, on a database level, if you're having one column of type ST geometry, you can store either one point in it per record, or you can store a whole geometry collection, which means you can have a set of points, line strings and polygons just stored in one column in one record in the database. Geometries are in general 0, 1, or 2 dimensional, and each geometry is associated with a proper spatial reference system, which I have introduced before when talking about spatial data in general. Coming to the input and output formats for geospatial data in SAP HANA, we offer support for well known text and well known binary. Both are defined by the Open Geospatial Consortium, which means that a geometry representation in well known text or well known binary can be read or consumed by most GIS software out there. Also, we offer support for GeoJSON and GeoHashes. You can import your ESRI shapefiles directly into SAP HANA by issuing the import statement on the SQL script level. On the output side, you have the ability to output your geometries as ready to consume SVG. Now let's dive into the details of the predicates and functions that we're offering. The predicates and functions can be roughly divided into the following categories. We offer functions for construction serialization of geometries, which is the input and output that I mentioned before. We offer functions for Boolean operations, like for example, to do a union between geometries or to intersect geometries. Also, we offer functions for relationship determination, for example, to ask if one geometry intersects with another geometry. We offer functions for property computation, such as the area of a polygon for transformation, like for example, to transform a geometry from one spatial reference system to another spatial reference system, or to inflate a polygon. And we offer functions for inspecting geometries. For example, to ask of how many points a polygon consists. Here you see one example of different predicates that we're offering and how they're implemented on a SQL script level. Let's just take, for example, the ST within in the upper left corner. That function you can use to ask if one geometry, G1, is within another geometry, G2. Like in the example here, you see a point and a polygon. To do that on a database level, you can ask if G1 is dot ST within G2. And the result of that function will either be 1 or 0, depending on the fact if G1 is placed within G2 or not. Here you see a concrete example on how to use predicates on a SQL script layer. The first example at the top shows the usage of ST within in the select clause. We have in this case two columns, location and name, which are part of the table customers. As you might imagine, location is the geospatial column, name is just a string identifier. 
In this example, we are selecting location.stwithin geometry, comma, name from customers. So this will actually give us just an indicator, 0 or 1, if a certain customer is within a certain geometry or region, you can imagine, right? Now, with the second example, we have the usage of ST within in the WHERE clause. So, given the same table, customers with a name and a location, we can now select all the customers where location.st within geometry equals 1. So, you can select all the customers which are within a certain region. So, you have to imagine that the geometry here is a polygon determining, for example, a sales region. And the third example you see down there is uh, the usage with a spatial joint, so as part of the joint condition. We do, in this case, a select star from customers, left, uh, select, sorry, a select star from stores, left joint customers on c.location.st within as dot trading area equals one. So you're joining the customers with the trading areas of the stores and you get a list of customer per trading area. This slide gives you a brief overview of some of the standard functions that we're offering. The slide itself is not complete and I don't want to go into the details. Um, if you're interested in all the spatial functions that you have on a CP HANA, um, please visit the documentation of SAP HANA Cloud where you find the exact list of all functions. One type of aggregate functions that enables more sophisticated spatial analytics or even spatial machine learning is spatial clustering. So what is spatial clustering? Um, the problem in a nutshell, given a set of points, um, how do you group, group those points into meaningful clusters for either generating advanced insights or visualizations? One answer is you have that plane with the points here. You can do a simple grid clustering. So you just have rectangular grids applied to that plane. And now what you can do is you can aggregate, for example, the number of points per grid cluster. And so you get the insight that there are certain clusters where there is a high density area, so we get many points, and there are certain clusters which you could consider a low density area. So what is the advantage of that? As mentioned, you either can use it for your analytics, so it's important to know for certain areas if there's a high density of certain locations or if there's a low density. On the other hand side, you can also use it for visualizations. Like one example that I occasionally show um, at presentations, you can visualize the listings of Airbnb in Berlin. There's a data set that you can download online. And as you may imagine, um, if you just visualize them as points on a map, you'll see exactly nothing because there are 20,000 points on a map. So everything looks crowded. What I've done now in that picture here is that I applied a hexagonal clustering to this point set and colored the different hexagons on the plane according to the density of points. And you will immediately see the neighborhoods that you would expect where you get the highest densities of Airbnb listings. So what are typical use cases for spatial clustering? Um, so you may consider using spatial clustering if your business data is associated with location data. So if you can assign records to a location at all. That's like the general prerequisite if you're doing spatial analytics. Also, you want to answer a business question for geographical areas or regions. And you want to identify areas or regions with certain characteristics. So typical questions that you can answer with spatial clustering is, what is the area with the highest average income per household in my sales region? Or in which region are most of my customers in the high value segment located? Or where should I open my new store, which is a combination of geospatial clustering and optimization. Technically, geospatial clustering algorithms can be divided into two groups, which is regular clustering and dynamic clustering. Regular clustering describes um, a static grid, like I've shown before, the grid clustering, rectangular grid clustering or the hexagonal clustering. Um, so the shapes are mostly equal in size and they're uniform shapes, and static clusters are rather easy to compute. On the other hand side, when looking at the dynamic clustering, this is more data-driven approach to finding clusters. That means um, that it's based on the underlying point data set, 
which results in mostly diverse, diverse shapes, which are more complex to compute. On an SAP HANA SQL script level, we offer on the regular side the grid and hexagonal clustering. And for the dynamic data-driven clusterings, we offer dbscan and k-means. Let's look at the regular clustering. So you see here three different kinds of clusters, which is um, triangulation is the first on the left side. Um, in the middle, you see the rectangular clustering and on the right hand side, the hexagonal clustering. These are three different kinds of clusters. What do you think? How many different kinds of regularly shaped clusterings for the plane are out there? Yeah, I'll tell you. It's exactly these three. So there's a link you can Google for it. Actually, there's no other way to divide a plane into regular, equally sized shapes. Um, this can be proven by looking at the at the angles, actually at the intersection points. But that's another story. Now, one thing which I would like to show you with that slide is what the difference between the static clusters is. So if you look at the triangulation at the left side, You'll see by the color code, for example, um, there are three different kinds of neighbors. So uh, if you look at the center, uh, the orange shape, there's one blue kind of neighbor. So they, this kind of neighbor has a certain distance to the center of the shape in the center. And there is a green kind of neighbor and the pink kind of neighbor. So they all have a different distance. In the center, for the rectangular shape, you got two different kinds of neighbors. You got the one which are diagonal and the one which are not diagonal. And again, these neighbors have a different distance to the center rectangle. On the right-hand side, you see the hexagonal clustering. Hexagons do only have one kind of neighbor. So each neighbor cell has exactly the same distance from the center like the other neighbors have. This is a property which is especially suitable for spatial analytics or spatial machine learning, because you don't have to care about the fact that you need to weight certain neighbors differently, because there is only one kind of neighbor cell. In a nutshell, the clustering approaches that we have in HANA, I mentioned that grid and hexagon, um, easy to compute. We got dbscan, which is best for non-spherical clusters. So this is a density-based approach. It has higher complexity, but gives better insights depending on the use case. And we have the k-means clustering, which is uh, based or which optimizes the distance of the points to the centroids of the cluster. Again, we have a higher complexity, but we may, may gain better insights. As before, for the spatial predicates, I want to show you one example how spatial clustering looks on the SQL script layer. On the left-hand side, you've seen the example that I've shown you before, the um, listings of Airbnb in Berlin. Um, you'll have the select from group by clause. This is what you know from standard SQL. This time, the group by clause looks a little bit different because it's actually a geospatial group by clause. So it says, Group cluster by location. Location is the geospatial column that we have using hexagon that indicates which kind of spatial clustering algorithm needs to be chosen. X cells 50, which is a uh, parameter that you can pass to the hexagonal clustering. So in this case, it tells you uh, in the X dimension, it should give you 50 cells, which determines the size of the individual cell. In the select part itself, um, you can use a mixture of geospatial aggregation functions and just usual SQL aggregation functions. So the first two that you see is st underscore cluster ID and st underscore cluster cell. These are the geospatial aggregation functions. The first is giving you an ID per cluster and the second is giving you the actual geometry of the hexagonal cell. The third line in the select statement is just a count star. So a usual SQL aggregation for counting the records in each cell. And for that example, for the picture that you see down there, I just used the result of count star to actually color the different hexagonal cells. On the right hand side, you see another example, uh, this time using dbscan. Um, again, if we focus on the group cluster by clause, we see again starting group cluster by location. This time, we say using dbscan and we hand over some parameters to the dbscan algorithm. In this case, in the select part, we're again selecting the cluster ID 
the number of households in this case, what we have in the cluster, the average income per household, as well as the concave hull of the locations that we have in the cluster. So you can imagine, you see here the, the points are households. Um, in this case, we have a where clause just selecting the high income households. So we're just having a selection. Then we do the DB scan clustering. We find three different clusters, the blue, the red, and uh, the, the white one. So which is technically speaking an outlier, not a cluster. Um, so if we ignore the outlier, we can actually determine two clusters uh, where we where one has the ID2 with nine house cells in there, average income 140,000. Uh, the other cluster with ID1, six households in there with an average income of 120,000. Thank you for listening to that video. Um, the next video, I will actually show you a live demo on what can be done on the secret script layer and how we actually can create a table with an SD geometry column.